Hello, I'm Dr. John Durr, and with me is Chad Christensen. We're members of the Agrarian Solutions team, and we'd like to show you how to do a very great job of collecting samples for mycotoxin analyses for your customer. Chad, let's head on back and talk about these samples. Sounds good. We're going to collect about a one pound sample from a feed bunk. Figure one shows what we should be looking at. Figure two shows a closer look. See the red and white particles? These represent DON and zeorelinone respectively. In figure three, that bag has been emptied and you see several such toxin markers. Let's say these represent over 1,000 parts per billion of DON and over 250 parts per billion of zeorelinone. This is a serious problem for your dairy customer. Chad, scientists have proven that about eight pounds of dry matter is needed to get an accurate estimate of mycotoxins. For a moist feed, TMR for example, or ingredients such as corn silage, you would need 25 pounds or more to meet this requirement. You're not going to go collect that much. The post office won't ship it for you even if you're willing to pay the freight, and no commercial laboratory will dry and process that amount. But cutting the amount in half doubles the error in the test. So for our one pound sample, we have to expect errors on the order of 60%. How can we get around this problem? We could attempt to collect that huge sample. That would fail for the reasons I've already given. Or we could collect many samples, which on average would give a pretty good picture of the true mycotoxin load. Of course, at today's testing cost, Chad, that would cost $1,200 to $1,800. I don't think you want to pay that, and I certainly don't. So the best alternative is to take the very best sample you can and then always keep in mind the error that will be present and what that means in explaining the test result to your client. So let's take the sample. Chad? This is the sample submission form you will use. As you can see, it's very simple to fill out. Be sure to add your email address. You may include the email address of the dairy or the nutritionist if you want them included. Now put an ID on the bag with a waterproof marking pen. Slip the sample into the mailer. Attach the prepaid mailing label. As soon as you can, drop this in any U.S. Postal Service collection box. Dr. Durer, wouldn't it be easier to carry a bucket, take more material, mix it up, and then fill the baggie? Actually, Chad, with TMR or silage type samples, the wide variation in particle size would cause items to segregate, and we'd end up with a very biased sample. But Chad, let me ask you, it's late Friday and you've just finished up visits for the day, and you have a couple of samples in the truck. It's August and very hot. But on the way home, you forgot to put the samples in the mail. What are you going to do? I think I'd rather hold on to them at home and keep them cold over the weekend instead of leaving them in an outdoor drop box where the heat may affect the microbial action in the bag. Then Monday, I'd put them in the mail, drop for pickup. If the post office is close and open on Saturday, I can get them inside there, but that raises an issue. It's that same very hot day and I have several stops to make before I can mail samples. Where should I keep the ones I've already collected? If you had stopped at a fruit stand first thing in the morning and bought a few peaches, where would you put them? You really want to do about the same thing. Don't put it in a trunk that gets hot or an exposed truck bed. Inside your route truck would be okay or in the cab of, of the truck would be fine. How about multiple samples? Any problem with having more than one in the same mailer? As long as you clearly mark the bag itself with an indelible marker and have the correct submission form for each, you can put as many as you can conveniently fit in the mailer. But the lab has to be able to match the form to a well-labeled bag. Chad, I noticed the cows behind us seem content with their TMR. There isn't a great deal of sorting going on. But many times when we sample, there will be a lot of sorting. Do you collect some of that sorted feed? My first priority is the feed the cows are consuming. So the first sample must be the feed that is still in front of them. I may well take a second sample concentrating on the sorted materials. Both my customer and I might like to know if mycotoxin concentrations prompted some of that sorting. If you have questions about sampling procedures, please give us a call.